I only have one message to give you. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you call me. I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. Coming to you live from our top secret broadcasting bunker here at Area 52, deep in the heart of Ozark, Missouri. We keep moving. Can't stay in one place. This is Pastor Mike, and I'm online, and I am, I am alive in spite of references to me being near dead or having a near-death experience in church Sunday. I am still alive, and I am doing fine, and um, I am healthy as a horse. Okay, and sometimes I eat what like one too, but um, I uh, wrote. I started Sunday night. I went home, and I thought, you know what? I want to blog again. I used to blog back before we did all this stuff, and um, when our blog got hacked for the fifteen thousandth time, uh, we just took it down. And I thought, you know what? I want to blog again. So I started up a blog Sunday night. It is at. Uh, PastorMikeHoggard.com PastorMikeHoggard.com There should be a link on our church website And there will be links all over the place to that And uh, But I wanted to write about what, what I experienced Sunday morning And uh, a little bit about what had happened And to just kind of make the ministry a little bit more personal With everybody Just kind of, it's like a personal blog It's kind of the things that I do And the things that I see throughout the day and uh, so I wrote about that, and I called it Sunday Itis because I am. I feel great today. I felt great yesterday. Uh, felt great Saturday and Friday and Thursday and Wednesday and everything else. I just feel wonderful. And on Sunday morning, I don't know. It's. I don't think it's every Sunday morning, but it's been happening a lot lately. And some people are worried about my diet. I think my diet is in good shape. Uh, although I may not have the diet that other people have. Um, I've been to my doctor. I'm trying to get my cholesterol down, blah, blah, blah. I've had my blood sugar tested, my blood pressure tested, and everything seems to be relatively normal. But let me tell you about an email that I got uh, last night uh, from a guy <clears throat> that um, saw the Sunday sermon. And, um, I, and I'm going to be dead honest with you. This is not false humility in any way. I cannot remember, um, and it's not that I was in a daze or anything like that, but I just can't remember much of what I preached Sunday morning. It wasn't that memorable to me. Um, I would, I, you can tell that I really struggled uh, preaching that. And I thought if, if I were to categorize my sermons from like the best to the worst, that would be kind of down here somewhere. I've preached worse sermons. I know that. Uh, but a guy wrote our ministry uh, the other day, uh, last night, and um, uh, he said, Pastor Mike, he said, I watched that, and he said, I've been bawling like a baby, and he said, God is just really helping me and dealing with me about a lot of things, and he said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go study my Bible. Thank you for preaching that. And I can absolutely tell you that that was none other than the power of God, because it was not my cognate, and I think that God allowed, just like he did in the book of Job, God allowed the devil to afflict me Sunday morning because, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, again, I'm dead honest. Sunday morning before I left the house, I was back in my little office, and I, I actually prayed a specific prayer. It's, it's all about naming it and claiming it. If you name it and you have enough faith-filled words, then it'll happen. And so I just, before I left for church Sunday morning, I said, God, I would really like to not have to run out of church, okay, and have this little problem that I have. I'd really like to not do that today. And, I mean, I did. I prayed it. My heart was open to God. Now, somebody might say, well, you didn't have enough faith in that. You kind of doubted. You kind of weren't were iffy. You said, Lord, if it be your will... And um, but I didn't do anything like that. I just said, God, I, I would rather rather not do that. And uh, so, does that mean that God hates me? Uh, uh, there's been times when I felt that way. Uh, no, God does not hate me. Does that mean that prayer does not work? No, it doesn't mean that. Does it mean that God said no? I am of the firm, and I'm not backing down from this. I'm the, of the firm persuasion 
that if you are a born-again child of God, the scriptures are very clear on this, that when you ask God something, he does not tell you no. Now, the Bible says, for we know not what to ask. And that's true. God actually gave me something better than what I had prayed for. And that one, and God knows my heart. That was that his power would be poured forth, that his word would go out and have an effect and impact on people's lives. And if it takes me being sick during the service, I'll take that every Sunday. I will take that absolutely every Sunday. If, if God will allow the devil to weaken my body on Sunday in order so that God could really show up and God could do things in people's lives and, and, and all of that, I'm, I'm fine with that. Because it's not about making Mike Hogger this stout man of God that never fa- It's not about that. It's about showing people the real power of God. Because the truth of it is, I'm just like everybody else out there. I have weaknesses. I have frailties. I have, I have problems. I have problems up here. I got problems in my body. I'm just like everybody else. What I'm never, ever, ever going to do, God will not let me do it. God will never let me or allow me to posture myself above anybody else and say to them or, or give off the impression that if you would just come up to my level, then everything would be fine. That's not my ministry. That's not what I'm going to do. God prohibits me from doing that. It's unbiblical. That's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. You see the, the polished and the suave characters on TV like Joel and uh, some of these other t- TV preachers, you see the polish that they, you see that they never make a mistake. You see this, you see, you see what they want you to see. Okay? But we broadcast our services live. If we make mistakes playing the instruments for the church service, so what? Okay? We didn't hire uh, $800 a week musicians to come in here. And play these instruments for us. It's me, it's my daughter, it's my son Matthew. We have a young lady playing flute. I bought a banjo. I bought a banjo. I'm going to try to learn how to play the banjo. Okay? But we make mistakes. We made mistakes playing music. I make mistakes preaching. I make mistakes on this broadcast. I make mistakes uh, doing the Watchmen broadcast. We just edit them out. You never see them. Okay? I make mistakes in life. That is what I do. And it's not in my strengths that God's grace is poured out. It's in my weaknesses. That's his grace poured out. And uh, so anyway, I appreciate everybody's concern and their prayers. But I, I feel wonderful today. I feel like I could go out and play soccer. Somebody does not have a sense of humor. Somebody out there has a bad sense of humor. Oh, my goodness. I got raked over the coals by something that I said Thursday, and it wasn't about tongues. Oh, my goodness. It was about soccer. Football. I'm sorry, uh, you Englanders and your Nederlanders. Football. It was about soccer. I said something about soccer. And I had this little, boy, I even hate to say it, I think the guy's going to show up over here. I said something about soccer, and I said it's for girls and Europeans. It was a joke. It was funny. Okay? I thought it was funny. America, just like you Englanders, I was informed by Marie, who lives in England, that she went into town and she forgot it was Derby Day, and I'm going Derby Day. Well, and they and here in America they had the Kentucky Derby, which is a horse race. And she said, "Oh no, Manchester United and Manchester this are playing soccer, and all the hooligans are out and their face, faces painted. I know they get pretty serious about soccer in England. I know they get pretty serious about it in other places, but here in America, it just." I, I don't know. We have football. We have baseball. I like baseball is my sport. I am a big baseball fan. And I'm just not that into soccer. And so I made a little blurb about soccer. And a guy writes in. I'm going to read you his email. Oh, my 
goodness. He said, if you wanted to diss soccer, one can guess you may be just such a tub of lard you couldn't make the cut. When I played soccer, we had more broken bones and pulled muscles and ligaments in one season than the football team we had had in five. We just had enough brains that having them smashed in by some 300-pound moron seemed like a stupid way to have fun. I'm uh, less than 300 pounds now. Thank you. I saved that kind of stupidity for when I joined the Corps and dodged bullets. Oh, my goodness. It was a joke. Okay? It was, it was humor. It was sarcasm. Whoa. Anyway, uh, good to be with you today from our top secret broadcasting bunker here in uh, Ozark, Missouri. I got a couple things I want to share with you today. Uh, I went back over all the missed, you know, 400 emails that have been sent in since then. I, I look for some things relevant uh, today, and um, I've got a couple items that I want to deal with today, and and they come by. Well, let me uh, first. Let me do this. Let me go up to. Um, uh, let me go to Drudge Report. See what's going on in the world. Um, something about Obama making a secret trip. What is it? Uh, is it Bilderberg time again? Maybe somebody could check that out. Um, there was oh. Andrew Breitbart, Andrew Breitbart, um, the guy that uh, said he had this explosive information on Barack Obama, and he said, I'm going to release it tomorrow. It's going to be huge, and that he dies that night. Now, they take his body to the corner, and, and Andrew Breitbart, he runs Breitbart.com. It is a news site that is noted not to be very friendly to the Obama administration. And so here is uh, Andrew Breitbart, and he drops over dead just ahead of these big, huge things that he's supposed to be supposed to release. And um, then they do an autopsy. The coroner says um, it was a heart attack. He just simply died of a heart attack. And now, listen to this. The medical examiners in Los Angeles are investigating the possible poisoning death of one of their own officials who may have worked on the case of Andrew Breitbart, the conservative firebrand who died, died March 1st, the same day Sheriff Joe Arpaio announced probable cause for forgery in President Obama's birth certificate. Michael Cormier, a respected forensic technician for the L.A. County Coroner, died under suspicious circumstances at his North Hollywood home April 20th, the same day Breitbart's cause of death was finally made public. Dun, dun, dun. That just sounds, you know what that sounds like? How many remember the uh, Clinton body count? This goes back to the 90s. All of these people that knew Bill Clinton all of a sudden died. Okay, all of the and I will I will say this. This is public record. Okay, all of the all of the bureau and alcohol and tobacco firearms officers that were killed on the original way uh, uh, original raid. That's what I'm trying to say on Waco, the one that started the uh, the holdout there. All of them that were killed, not some of them. But all of the BATF agents that were killed when they originally raided the Branch Civilian Compound in Waco, Texas, were former Bill Clinton bodyguards. Every one of them. All of them. The whole list, everyone that was killed, were former Bill Clinton bodyguards when he was the governor of, of Arkansas. When you read the stories, they were talking about how he, he visited all these hookers, that he was at cocaine parties, this and that and the other. His bodyguards were highway patrolmen of the state of Arkansas, and they are the ones that carried him to all these places. And now, every one of these bodyguards gets sent to the Bureau of, of Alcohol, Tobacco, on firearms and every one of them gets shot and killed what's up with that okay there's a conspiracy you don't have to know what's going on you don't have to see all the secret documents and everything like that that's just not right there's just something wrong about that and so here andrew breitbart got this humongous information on barack obama and supposedly the guy that works for him now has released and said this is it and we're going doesn't look like much 
okay? It makes you wonder, is there something else? Is it, was, it, was Breitbart murdered? And now all of a sudden the guy that's part of the investigating team that would determine whether or not he's murdered or not dies of poisoning. Hmm. Interesting. And then Dan Savage. What a name for a militant homosexual. Uh, Dan Savage, a guy that uh, is favored by the Obama administration as someone who is standing up for the rights of the gay and lesbian community. Uh, and we support this guy. We want him in our schools. Uh, that's what uh, Obama is saying about this guy. Anyway, this guy goes to a, a high school. And the high school called him in to give a speech on bullying you not we don't want anybody bullied now okay now i will say that when i was growing up i was bullied okay i uh i it's still to this day i i tend not to stand up for myself um i tend to back down i tend to shy away i i mean i that's just how i am it's, it's in my nature um and you know what i i i didn't like being bullied when i was a kid but I don't blame my problems now on the fact that some kid didn't like me when I was in fifth grade. Uh, but anyway, I know it's a serious thing right now. Bullying right now turns into murder eight out of ten times in this country for some reason. It's, it's a different world than, than what we live in than what we grew up in. But anyway, here this guy giving a speech. Uh, and the article says, Dan Savage offended some Christian teens when he told them we can learn to ignore the bull blank in the Bible about gay people. Savage made his comments during a speech at the National High School Journalist Conference in Seattle. After many students walked out of the speech, one of whom had appeared to be crying, Savage said, It's funny, as someone who's on the receiving end of beatings that are justified by the Bible, how pansy blanked some people react when you push back. Fox News reports that Savage comments upset the executive director of GOP Proud, a gay conservative group. Dan Savage should apologize for his comments, should apologize to the high school students in attendance whom he called pansy blanks. Jimmy LaSalvia told Fox, it is ironic that someone whose claim to fame is fighting bullying would resort to bullying tactics and attacking high school students who were offended by his outrageous remarks. I'm telling you, there is no such thing as a pacifist homosexual. They're going after everybody. Uh, and I mentioned this before. When will the homosexual agenda stop in America? It will stop when America is a ruined heap of ashes, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's when it'll stop. And uh, these students got up and walked out. I applaud that. There's no way in the world that those kids should sit there and listen to that kind of garbage from this guy. He's lucky he didn't come to Hillsboro. That's the town I live in, by the way. Uh, let's see here. What else going on on La Drudge Report? Uh, there was supposed to be some kind of uh, uprising today since it's uh, May 1st. By the way, it is not, it's technically not May 1st. Uh, it's technically May 2nd. You know, we had a, a leap year. Today is not the typical May 1st. It's not the 121st day of the year. It's the 122nd day of the year. Now, I have an interesting video. Um, I had not heard of Sid Roth and It's Supernatural. I had not heard of his program um, until someone had pointed me to one of the people that he had on there by the name of Mark Verkler. Mark Verkler, of course, was the guy that that said that he goes into his little place and goes into this trance, rolls his eyes back in the head, and he gets in contact with God through this voice that he hears. And when he comes out of it, he starts writing all this down, and that's the words of God. Uh, that's uh, heresy, by the way. And Sid Roth was promoting this, and then he had him back on, uh, talking about how... Uh, something about dream interpretation. You can make yourself dream all these things, and they will absolutely come to pass. And Sid Roth had the magic key to unlock all this stuff. And Sid Roth's show seems to really... Sid Roth is a 28-minute infomercial. Okay, that's what he is. 
Um, he is he is selling selling everybody's books, everybody that comes along, and it's all about th- God in the supernatural realm because it's supernatural. I mean, that's that's what he does. And so here is, uh, and I noted the date on this. It was uh, 2008, and I'm probably going to jump in here and um, and uh, kind of pipe in. I'm going to try to limit myself because I do have some things to deal with on on sacred nameism. This is an extension of what I was of what I was getting at last Thursday on the tongues issue. Uh, is I'm going to deal a little bit with the sacred name issue, and I don't want you to be offended by that. If you happen to call him Yahshua, um, I don't have a problem with that. I don't think it's a sin to say Yahshua. I don't think that's wrong. Um, but I will tell you to think that that's, that's the limit of as, as to how his name is be, be pronounced. I'm going to tell you you're dead wrong, and I'm going to show you from Scripture just how wrong you are. Okay, so I don't want to be offen- I, I don't trying to be offensive, but those who are contrary to Scripture, when I give Scripture, that's offensive to them. I've already found that out. And so anyway, um, here is Sid Roth. Now, guess who he's interviewing? Okay, Todd Bentley. You're gonna you're listen now for listen for the lightning of God. Okay, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to withhold myself. And wait for the punchline of this video, but I may not be able to. Let's let's see it. You tell our people what's happening in the supernatural right here in the it's supernatural. We're, we've been experiencing a mighty outpouring of God's presence and glory. It's it's one of the most unique outpourings I've ever been a part of because the glory of God is so thick. It's like honey. It's overwhelming. And day after day, week after week, the presence of God has been so overwhelming. I'm, I'm, I'm literally spending hours a day, most of the time weeping, crying, laughing on my face. And with that outpouring has come incredible, notable signs and wonders. I mean, like people that are being healed of terminal cancers. Wait a second. Something just happened in the atmosphere. Can you sense it? Yeah, Something I can. just, I don't know whether an angel walked in or what. But the presence of the Lord just just, oh, just happened. The glory just, who it's just, it's, it's a confirming, bearing witness presence came into the room just now. People are going to feel it in their homes, that same anointing is coming right into their homes. Thank you, Lord. Release that glory. It, it's, it's here now. I can feel it. it it's, this is what happens to us. I'm here. getting hot, but go ahead. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm starting to feel a tingling now in my hand. And, you know, that's a sign of the gift of healing being stirred up. Well, for me, I, I know the it. The thing that's so amazing about what's going on now is transferable. Explain that. People are receiving it. We're praying for people. A pastor friend of mine in the UK, he came all the way here to Lakeland. We laid hands on him. He took it back to uh, the UK and announced, I just got back from Lakeland, Florida. I'm going to have an impartation service to release the anointing. 1,500 people showed up for the first meeting and now they're going into extended meetings and the same kind of miracles are happening there they had over a hundred people healed in the first meeting so it's not you it's God it's absolutely God uh, what, what did Rick Joyner just tell you Yeah, Rick Joyner told me that two of his students came from his ministry school to Lakeland and they were just sitting in the meetings in fact one young man got saved they went back to the school and they started testifying to what they saw and what it was like in Lakeland when they I got I got it I can't do it I got to jump in here. He starts talking. Oh, you did you feel the tingling just now? Feel that in my hand? That tingling? That's electricity. That's that's how God shows me that he's healing. Okay? Now, here's something that I I want you to do. And I'm dead serious about this. I want you to ask yourself during the course of this interview so far, have you heard either Sid Roth or Todd Bentley quote scripture? Have you heard either one of them do it? See, the tingling, that's, that's God's energy going through my hand. That is his healing. God, God has shown me that's his healing power. Where is that? Show me the scripture that you're talking about. Show it to me in the Bible. And then he starts talking about impartations. And I want to tell you something, okay? You stay away from these people. You st- you don't don't go investigating what they're doing. Don't go in there. I mean, stay away from these people. They're dangerous. They talk about, he's talking about what happened in Toronto. Here's, and, and, and it ended up in, in Pensacola. The uh, Pensacola, the uh, Brownsville Assembly of God in Pensacola, Florida, who is now in about $12 million in debt because of their revival. 
Okay, but anyway, what happened was some guys went up to Toronto, got all this, got got the impartations on them, and then they took it down to Pensacola and they imparted that to everybody else, and they were spreading it around all over the place. And then Todd Bentley shows up. And he's got the impartation. Someone gave him the magic touch, and now he's got it, and he's going around electrocuting everybody with his touch, and then they're going back all over the place. It's dangerous. Stay away from it. If there's a movement of God, show me in the Bible where you have to go to somebody to get it. If God's going to move, he's going to move. He's going to move through here. Anybody got a Bible? You want God to move? Get your Bible out and start reading bunch of nonsense they're setting you up people and then he's then he brings rick joiner in now how do i know that todd bentley's a setup because of rick joiner rick joiner is none other than a knight of malta a catholic knighting organization where the catholic church basically says we give our approval to you bud wink 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 that means you're on the same team with us the Rick Joyner, who is the guy that after Todd Bentley was found out to be a drunk and a whoremonger, kicking everybody in the belly, giving them Holy Ghost natural gas healing. Um, Rick Joyner is the one that said, OK, leave your wife, marry your girlfriend and it'll be OK. And we'll restore. We'll keep you off. We'll keep you off the stage for a while. Until this thing blows over, then we're going to bring you back because you're big money. So then they bring Todd Bentley back and his new girlfriend slash mistress slash wife, Jessa. And she's up on the stage doing this. She's got the Holy Ghost in her. Okay? Man, I'm dizzy. But Rick Joyner is a knight of Malta. He is a Roman Catholic agent. And I don't use those terms very often. That's, I mean, it sounds like I'm crazy. But Rick Joyner, you go look it out. He's knights of Malta. And Rick Joyner is the one who basically is putting Todd Bentley out there. Follow it, people. Follow the garbage. It'll lead you back to Rome just about every time. Now, get ready for this one. Here we go. Let me, let me pull him back up here. here. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit fell on all the ministry school students and a bunch of the staff at Morningstar. And at midnight, they're on their faces weeping, repenting. And then the parents that came to pick up their kids, they came into this atmosphere of glory. They're on their face. And it went on the next day. And then it went on the next day. And we're still hearing reports of the young people being touched in a mighty way just because a couple of young guys came to Lakeland. They carried it back with them to uh, North Carolina. What is going to happen with this move of God's Spirit that's going on? Has God shown you? Yeah, He has. What is going to happen? It's w what's beginning right now, and it's going to begin to break out all over the earth. That's the first thing. It's, it's global. It's international. It won't be stopped. We're in Listen, the did you hear it? It's global. It's international. What is that telling you? It tells, it tells you that this movement is part of all these other movements that are bringing all the little daughters back under the whore. Okay? Go read Revelation 17, Revelation 18. Go read Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel 16. As the mother is, so is the daughters. And what Todd Bentley is doing under the Knights of Malta, under Rick Joyner, under the Vatican, what he's doing is that he is responsible for bringing all of the whore daughters back under the great whore mother of Babylon. That's exactly what he's doing. So he says it's international, it's global, it's everywhere. I don't doubt it one bit. I don't doubt it one bit. Now let's keep going. Wave. Like, could this be the last wave of God's Spirit before Listen, Jesus returns? It could be. I, I believe that what's happening now, I, I don't know how long it's going to last, will carry us right into the second coming. Whereas the move of God was Toronto, and a lot of what was happening was, went around the world, of course, but, you know, it was centered in one place, Pensacola as well. You know, and we are in a place right now, we're, we're moving all the time. This thing is going to go everywhere, and I believe it's a global outpouring. Yeah, I mean, it's like a wind, and the wind's blowing here, and the wind's blowing there, and the wind blows wherever it wishes. And you said something else. It's going to be not confined to a stadium. No, it's going to be everywhere. There'll be stadiums all over the earth being filled. What, in your opinion, should someone do that's watching us and they're saying, right now, you're saying, right now, I know that you're saying this, what about me? That's good for that guy, but what about me? I'm hearing pain. 
I'm here in agony. I have prayed and nothing has happened. Would you talk to them right now? Yeah, absolutely. Faith can do everything right now. And, and all you need to do is receive. And if you can believe right now that these miracles are possible, then I want you just to put your hand on the part of your body, wherever the pain is. Don't you got do pain it. in your body, you got Don't tumor, cancer. Put your hand on that part of your body. And I'm going to pray that this presence that's in the studio right now is going to come right through the television. Right through Baloney. the television, that light, that we call it the lightnings of God, the power of God. Okay, I got it. Did you hear him? The lightnings of God. He said, that's what we call it, the lightnings of God. Now, first of all, he said, he said, if you just put, your, don't do this. Put your hand on the screen now and, and touch my hand. You know where that came from? That came from Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts started that stuff when he, when he decided he just didn't like tents anymore. He wanted stadiums. He wanted big air-conditioned places. So he gets on TV, and all of a sudden now he's telling everybody, put your hand against mine on the television screen, okay? Put your hand against mine, okay? And God has shown me that that's a, that's a form of, of touching me and a point of contact. God showed me that. Now, number one, where did he show it to you, Oral? Okay, where did he, where'd you get that from again? So these guys come up with all this extra biblical revelations, these new revelations from God. And the thing that gets me is that everybody believed it. You had people all over the world going, ooh, Oral said touch his hand. So they're up there touching the television screen. And then Todd Bentley's going around telling everybody, now you touch this now, you put your hand, put your thumb right there. Okay, And when you do that, that's going to send God's lightning bolts through your skin. And I'm going, I got it. I got it. I got it. You see, that is biblical. It's all in the Bible. Okay, and I'm going to read it to you. Are you ready? 2 Samuel 22, 15. The Bible says he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. You remember what we said about tongues the other day? That tongues... Unknown tongues and confusion was a sign of God's judgment, not a sign of God's blessing. The same thing here. 2 Samuel 22, 15, write this down. Go study it. He sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. You know what it means to discomfit them? It means bust them up, break them in pieces. That's what God does. Okay? Um... Let's see here. Where is, where else? Where else? Psalm 144, 6. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Okay? Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Um, I mean, it's all right there. Then you have um, um, uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 18. He said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So this lightning that Bentley's talking about, I wonder what that could be. I wonder... It's just another form of God's judgment. Remember, this is the guy who right here upon his neck has Joel's army written across, tattooed onto his chest. Okay, And if you don't remember what Joel's army is, we did a Watchmen video on this. Go look it up. Joel's army is none other than the devils that have been locked away inside the bottomless pit. They're going to come out in Revelation chapter 9. You go compare Joel chapter 1 and 2 with Revelation chapter 9. You'll see they're virtually identical. Virtually identical in every way. And yet Todd's going around telling everybody that it's this breed of super Christians, a new breed. They're going to have their DNA changed. And all of a sudden they're going to be the super Christians that are going to take over the world for Jesus Christ. They're the ones that got it. It's kind of like the people I was talking about last Thursday that manifested themselves over tongues. It's an arrogance. So is... Now, again, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it politely, and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of <sighs> calm down, okay? Because I, I want to deal with this part in a nice way, because undoubtedly there are some of you watching today that I, I, I truly and honestly as I can say this, I never want to be an offense, and I always want you to understand what I'm saying and what I'm getting at. A lot of times I'll do a video and I'll run through some information and uh, people that may be new to the ministry, they don't know exactly where I stand on everything. They haven't watched everything I've done. And they asked me some questions that they said, are you saying, and I always have to say, no, that's not what I mean. And I kind of have to explain myself a little bit. I, I'd like 
B, I love God's people, and I love people that love the Bible and that love the Lord. And I do not want to. I don't. I don't want to offend anybody in any way. If you have, if you have uh, chosen to follow a, a, let's say, a more Hebrew lifestyle in your diet. Um, in your in your thought, in your language, in, in in your holidays, if you have chosen to do that, um, then I don't want to be I don't want to be your enemy. I I, I want to say you know what I think that's neat. Okay, um, I I do I think it's neat. I love the Hebrew language. I wish that I I don't know if I have the aptitude to know it. But I, I, I love the Hebrew language. I think it's a beautiful language. I think God's people, I love Israel. I love them. I, don't, I can't say I love them as much as Jesus does, but I tell you what, God has given me a heart for the future of the remnant of the 12 tribes that God is going to save in the last days. And so I don't want you to misunderstand me. But um, uh, there was an article on uh, Worldview Weekend. Um, I can't remember the guy that runs that. It was a featured article that he didn't write. It was somebody else that basically was uh, it was it was scholarly in its in its tone, and it basically was kind of bashing those of you who say Jehovah, okay. And it was written from a scholarly viewpoint that says, well, obviously you're not trained in the Hebrew languages the way a lot of us scholars are, and if you were, you would realize that the calling it by the name of Jehovah is probably not accurate and we probably don't have the real way of understanding it. And so that's basically what he was getting at. And I just didn't like the tone of the article because it basically said, you poor idiots that have not gone and got your doctorate in theology and, and languages, you poor people just don't know what you're doing. Okay, And I just, I hate that tone. I absolutely hate that. Uh, likewise, the sacred name movement. Now I found an article on uh, Wikipedia, it's called the Sacred Name Movement. It's, it tends to be neutral as to how it approaches. It's just kind of given some facts out here. Um, and here is just a digest of who they are. Uh, sacred Name Movement is a, is a movement within the Church of God or the Seventh Day uh, propagated by Clarence Orville Dodd, C.O. Dodd, from the 1930s that claims to seek to conform Christianity to its, quote, Hebrew roots in practice, belief, and worship. The best-known distinction of the SNM is its advocacy of the, of the use of the, quote, unquote, sacred name Yahweh, the reconstructed proper name of the God of Israel, and the use of the original Hebrew name of Jesus, often transcribed as Yahshua. Uh, the sacred name movement believers also generally keep many of the Old Testament laws and ceremonies such as Seventh Day Sabbath, Torah festivals, and keeping kosher food laws. Okay, again, if you do that as a choice, I don't have a problem with it. I don't think God has a problem with it. Okay, I'm, I'm just telling you that. I'm not, I'm not knocking you, nor am I making fun of you, nor am I condemning you as being witches and warlocks and everything else. If that is a choice that you have made to follow that lifestyle, then so be it. Okay. Uh, then it goes on. It says the SNM is a movement consisting of several small and contrasting groups unified by the use of the name Yahweh and to the most part Yahshua. Angelo Trena, a disciple of Dodd, undertook the writing of a sacred name edition of the Bible, publishing the Holy Name New Testament 1950 and the Holy Name Bible in 1962, both based upon the King James Version. But here it is. But changing names and words in the text to Hebrew-based forms, such as God with Elohim, Lord with Yahweh, and Jesus with Yahshua. Each group within the sacred name movement uses a sacred name Bible, and others have been uh, produced uh, since Trainers. And then it goes on to list that they've moved into some Pentecostal movements, and so on and so on. And I, there is somebody on Facebook that uh, I, I don't know if I friended them or they friended me or what. But just about every posting that they put on there has something to do with how you people are saying his name. You're, it's not Jesus. It's not Lord. It's not God. Get off of that stuff. You're not saying it right. God only wants to be called by his real and true name. And it's the idea that if you're not calling God by this name, then you are wrong and God is not hearing your prayers. And it even extends itself into the idea that if you are saying Jesus, then it is obvious to us that you're saying Zeus and you're praying to a false God and they won't have anything to, I mean, to, they, to, to them, you're a heretic. 
you're an absolute heretic for saying Jesus, for saying God, for saying Lord, for saying Jehovah. You're a heretic. And how do they know this? Because they rewrote the Bible to prove it. Now, here is an underlying premise, and I pulled up a website that was written by one of their followers, okay? And um, here is the premise, and, and I want you to get your King James Bibles out because we're going to do some comparison. The premise is, is that or, uh, originally, this is what they say, that originally the New Testament was not originally written in Greek. That's their premise. They saying that originally, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, all of these books of the New Testament, including Revelation, none of them were written in Greek originally. That their premise is they were all, every one of them, written in Hebrew. That's their premise. Now, um, that idea came about, I think, I'm trying to remember some things that I've studied a long time ago. It seemed like there was a guy <clears throat> that hypothesized this um, back, I don't know, 100 some odd years ago, that he believed that a manuscript existed at one time before the Greek manuscripts of the New Testament that was the New Testament written all out in Hebrew. That was his premise. Now, he, he, it was a theory based upon nothing. There was no manuscript. He just theorized that there, he said, well, there should have been. Okay? So that's what they say. They're saying that before the Greek New Testament, it was all in Hebrew. Here's the issue. There, it, it, it doesn't exist. There isn't, a, there isn't, a, there isn't any leftover fragments, copies, anything of a New Testament written in Hebrew that establishes the idea that the New Testament was written in Hebrew be, and then translated into Greek. The evidence, there is no evidence, okay? It's just like me saying in this room next to me here is a nine foot tall Sasquatch that I captured over the weekend, okay? I have no evidence. I'm just telling you what's in there, okay? Or I think maybe I thought I might have seen him at one time. Or I think he should be in there. But since I cannot supply any evidence, you're not required to believe it. At the mouth of two or wit two witnesses or three, let every word be established. But here in this case, we don't even have one witness. We don't have a witness of the idea that the New Testament was written in Hebrew before it was written in Greek. We don't have that. But here, uh, according to this article, and this is at um, yashanet.com, this is his proof now, his proof that the New Testament was originally written in Hebrew. He says other sources testifying to Hebrew being the language and the origin of the New Testament. Here's his evidence. Number one, recent Qumran findings shows secular documents written at that time concerning current events and they were written in Hebrew. Still no New Testament. Number two, Jewish coins found from that area minted with Hebrew text on them. No New Testament. Number three, a study of the writings of the Christian church, church fathers shows that much of the New Testament was written in Hebrew. Now, he doesn't quote these guys, which is funny to me. But then he says he names names like Arrhenius, Origen, and uh, Jerome and Clement of Alexandria. These guys were heretics, okay? But he doesn't actually use their quotations. He just says they said that it was, they alluded to it was written in Hebrew, but he's not giving any evidence. Number four, the prominent first century historian Josephus wrote in both his books, Antiquities and Wars, that Hebrew was the language of the first century Jews, but he still has not established any New Testament documents. Number five, modern linguistics shows that the texts themselves don't lend to an original Greek translation. So here, now he's saying, now the modern scholars, are, 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 are lend, lend to the idea, follow his language. Modern linguistics shows that the texts themselves don't lend to an original Greek translation. In other words, he's not quoting anybody, a linguist who says it absolutely is verifiable that the New Testament could not have been written in Greek. He doesn't say that, okay? 
Um, he now he this, then he says other books such as the Jewish New Testament by David Stern are also helpful in showing the Hebrew thought that gets lost in the Greek English and and on and on. So he gives a lot of this outside sidereal proof that the New Testament was written in Hebrew, not Greek. But he doesn't have any pr he doesn't have any text. There's no manuscripts. They don't exist anywhere. And if they don't exist, you're not required to believe it. Now, here's where I'm going with this, okay? Because the premise is, and I'm getting this based upon what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing from people, what they're what they're putting on their blogs, what they're putting on their Facebook pages, is that if if you are not saying God's name as Yahweh or Yahweh, see, there's differences. They all don't get along as to how it can be said. Or it's Yahshua or Yeshua or Yahashua. If you're not saying those names, however we told you to say them, you're not saved. You're not praying right. You're not getting God's response. You have to invoke the sacred name in, so in, in your prayers. And the Bible that you read must invoke the sacred name. They think that the now here's where it gets me, okay? And I'm going to make this real simple for everybody. What they did was they took a King James Bible, and a guy tried to present me with this in Michigan, which I found out this is where a lot of these people are located in Lansing, Michigan. The guy came up to me with this, and he said, "Have you seen this Bible?" And I said, "Well, is it a King James?" He said, "It's based on the King James, okay?" And I, I wouldn't even touch it. But what it was was they had taken every use of the word Lord, both Old Testament and New Testament, out. And they replaced it with Yahweh. Okay? Then God was Elohim and Jesus was Yahshua. They did that all throughout the Bible. In other words, they altered the scriptures. Upon what basis? Upon no basis whatsoever. They altered the Bible. Basically what they said was, and what they tried to do with me in that meeting and I'll never forget it as long as I live. They tried to get me to admit that there were mistakes in the King James Bible. And I want to say this, and I want to say this today. I'm going to say it tomorrow. I'm going to say it 10 years from now. And I'm going to say it my last breath, that the King James Bible is 100% right in everything that it says. 100%. Including... Jesus, including Lord, including Jehovah, it is right in everything that it says. I'm going to give you some scripture, okay? Uh, remember our discourse on tongues, okay? Our discourse on tongues was, it started out Isaiah 28, 11. God, God himself said, there's an authority for you right there. If you're looking for authority, here it is. Here's what God said. Now, some other guy might have said, oh, no, it's got to be Hebrew. It's got to be an original Hebrew. But God said in Isaiah 28, 11, with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? God told Israel right then. I'm gonna, there's going to be a point. I'm not going to talk in Hebrew anymore. I'm going to speak with another tongue. So what happened? On the day of Pentecost, what were they doing? In fact, if you look at the list in Acts chapter 2, the 17 languages, I, I'm, just, I'm just taking a wild guess here. I don't remember the Hebrew language being mentioned as one of the tongues that they were speaking in Acts chapter 2. I don't, I don't, I'm just kind of looking here. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see Hebrew being spoken. I see a list of 17 other languages given here. I don't see Hebrew as one of them. And what were they doing? They were giving utterance by the Holy Ghost. The Holy God himself was speaking through them in non-Hebrew languages. And you and I both know that every language in the world has a form of the word Jesus. In Latin, it's Yesu. In Greek, it's, it's Jesus. In Spanish, it's Jesus. In English, it's Jesus. In Japanese, it's Gisu. Okay? Um, I can't remember what it was in Swahili. But every tongue in the world 
has a form of the name Jesus. Do you know why? God gave them his name in their language. That's what he said he was going to do. And then in 1 Corinthians 14, the apostle Paul basically says that interpretation is a gift of the Spirit. Who am I? Who am I? And who are the sacred name people to say that God doesn't interpret the, the sacred name? God will not interpret the sacred name Yahweh into other languages. Who am I to say that when the Holy Ghost said that that's what he does? He interprets unknown languages into one so that people can understand, so that people can be edified. That's what the Holy Ghost does. And, and the proof of it is in the King James Bible and other vernacular translations that have followed the same textual lines as the King James. People have the Word of God in their language, including the name that they can call upon. John chapter 19, listen to this. John 19, verse 19, and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. What language did he write these in? Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. That's what he wrote them in. Okay? Listen to this. Because, the, remember, the principle is, God can only be understood as a Hebrew God. You can only understand Hebrew. You need to learn Hebrew. And you need to be a Hebrew. And that contradicts the theme of the New Testament. Paul said in Romans 1.16, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. By the way, they, they can't even handle the name Christ. They cannot handle that name. Because Christ is a pagan tongue word. It's not. It was Mashiach. Okay? Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's what he said. Paul said, Romans 10, 12, for there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him, whether it's Greek or Hebrew. Galatians 3.27, For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He said that in Greek, translated into English. Colossians 3.10, And we have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. That's what the Bible says. Okay? Listen to this. Isaiah chapter... Oh, I like this one. I like this one. Okay? You're going to like this one. Isaiah 60, verse 15. Write this down. Study it later. Isaiah 60, verse 15. Where hast thou hast been forsaken and hated? He's talking about Israel. So that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. You're going to like this. You know what God told Israel? Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles. You shall suck the milk of the Gentiles. You know what milk is? What's the word? God told Israel that it, when, when they found him, they would be sucking through a, through a Gentile bottle. Okay? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now, how, what, is, what is the proper pronunciation of yod hey va Hey, what is the proper pronunciation of that? Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to use the only authority that exists in my life. The only authority that exists in my life. Okay, if someone else comes along and wants to contradict what my Bible says, I believe my Bible and not them. You should have that mindset. I, listen, I want to set you free. I want to set you free from the people who would lord over you and dominate over you and tell you that you're not saved until you follow their doctrine. I want to set you free from that. I want to set you free from the people who are trying to get you to practice wizardry and, and witchcraft and magic. What are you talking about? Sacred nameism. 
sacred namism as it exists, the concept that unless you invoke the sacred name, you cannot reach God, that is witchcraft. That is a spell. It's spell casting is what it is. And I won't apologize for that. If that makes you mad, you're going to have to be mad at me. My authority is this Bible, okay? And if you choose not to follow me, then I'm going to encourage you to follow the Bible. But this Bible tells you what his name is in English. Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. By the way, you remember the, the, the deal where, um, who was it, uh, Juanita Bynum was praying to the, God, the many-breasted one? And that was in the Hebrew, it was El Shaddai. And some scholars think the Hebrew might have alluded to the idea that maybe the root of El Shaddai was breast. It's not the same. God said, my, my authority, my only authority in my life told me that it wasn't the many-breasted God. It was God Almighty. By the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah, was I not known to them. I have, I have no permission. I have no education. I have no license. I have no permission. I have no anointing to change. Let me get it up here. here. I have no permission to change. It's hard to do this here. What that says. I have no permission to do that. You don't either, by the way. You think you do, or you think somebody else does, but you don't have that permission. That's a private interpretation. Is what it, a private translation. Psalm 83, 18, that men may know that thou, whose name alone, think about it, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Who's the most high? Isaiah 12, 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Isaiah 26, 4, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Now, uh, take your Bibles. Everybody get your Bible out. Get your can of King James out, okay? Um, and it's 2 o'clock. I need to hurry. Okay. Um, turn to Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, very quickly. Matthew 4, 7. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you your, your authority. Yes, Pastor Mike. Well, get, get busy with it. Matthew chapter 4. And I am, as I'm becoming more and more prone to do, I'm going to shut my timer music off so it doesn't interfere. Okay? Matthew chapter 4, verse 7. And then I want you to hold your place. I'm going to put your finger right there. And I want you to hold your place and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 6. You got your finger in Matthew and look in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Okay? By the way, did you know that Every time Jesus responded to the devil uh, when he was being tempted in the wilderness, that all three times he was quoting from the book of Deuteronomy. I think that's interesting. But anyway, Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want you to look at verse 16. Okay? Verse 16 in Deuteronomy 6, uh, the King James Bible says, Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massah. I want you to notice that in your King James, the word Lord is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. You know what that means. Okay, that was the King James translator's way of telling you that the underlying Hebrew word was yod He va He. They're tell that's their way of telling you that. Now, the sacred name people, and I've seen a lot of other people do this. They say, those stupid King James translators, they didn't know what they were doing. They should have translated it the way it really is. It's what they should have done. Can I suggest to you that they were just simply following orders? From King James, the Mason, the homosexual? No. The King James translators were following orders from the Holy Ghost. <gasps> How can you say that? I'm going to show you. Matthew, 
chapter 4. You hold your place there. I want you to notice that in your King James, Deuteronomy 6.16, you should not tempt the Lord. yod heh vah -Hey. Matthew chapter 4, verse 7. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every... No, let's see. Where am I? For, verse 7. It is written again, Thou shall not tempt... Who? The Lord thy God. M maybe, maybe Jesus knows something about Hebrew and, and Greek and English and all the other languages that the sacred name people don't know or that the exalted scholars who are telling you that the word Jehovah just simply is a poor man's way of, of, of saying God's name. Maybe Jesus is smarter than, than all the rest of us. Because Jesus, when he was quoting, <laughs> he was quoting his own book. Remember, he's the one that wrote it. He's the one that said that Yod He Va He is Lord. He's the one that said that. Well, what does it say in the Greek? The Greek word is Kyrios. You know what that word means? Lord. I have even seen uh, the sacred name people accuse you of being Baal worshipers. When you when you have the if you have the word Lord in your Bible. It is obvious to them that you're a Baal worshiper because the word Baal means Lord. Is see see how see how it is? You're just a Baal worshiper is all you are. That's where they go with this thing. And I can tell you that every 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 single place in the New Testament where it quotes an Old Testament verse with the name Lord with Yod Hey Vah Hey Every place in the New Testament, it is always translated by the Holy Ghost himself as Lord. And so you know what? I accept. And those who would argue this, show me your evidence. You show me the Hebrew New Testament that you say existed before the Greek did. You show it to me. And then you show me in the Bible. See, I need two witnesses. Then you show me in the Bible that God always only intended to speak Hebrew. You show that to me. It belongs to the same crowd that says there is no way in the world that your English King James Bible could be inspired. There's no way in the world it can be. You know why? Because God doesn't speak other languages. That's what they say. Again, if you have accepted this lifestyle as part of your own, I don't want to be your enemy. Okay? But if you're part of the group... And you're probably as mad as a hornet at me right now. If you're part of the group that says that all of the rest of us now, except the sacred name people, are really pagans and Baal worshippers and Zeus followers, and we're all going to hell because we have not invoked the, the, the magic name, you're wrong. And and um, I, I, see an, I see an email here, and I don't know what it says. Maybe I'm judging. Okay? Um, the email says, uh, what's the point? Why is there such an uproar about all these facts? It seems like we're wasting time with these trivial subjects. Actually, it's my program, so I can spend the time how I want to. It seems in this movement of KJV, they're worshiping the King James Version and not King Jesus. You see, there you're wrong, Robert. Okay, Because, see, what you've done is that you have separated the, the Bible from Jesus. And they're the same. He is the Word. He is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And, oh, by the way, the Word was God. And so when you accuse me of worshiping the Bible, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm worshiping my Savior. I'm worshiping my Lord, my authority. Okay? And so that's my point right there. There are people that I, I'm just telling you.
They're trying to get you any way that the devil can get you to think that what's written in this book is a lie or a mistake or a mistranslation or that somebody else has got something better. Any way the devil can get you away from the authority of this book, that's exactly how it's going to work. And I will spend my program, however I want to, telling everybody, stay away from that crowd. Stay away from them. Let me read some emails. Let me start from the bottom here. Uh, let me let me just deal with. Um, man, I lost. Uh oh. I've lost something here. Oh, here they are. Here we here we go. Here we go. Let me start with. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I can't go to a website. Sorry. Um, that's not on topic. That's not on topic. Let me go up to this. You guys have been awfully quiet today. Casey writes in, I love you, Mike. I never get to hear you live broadcast because of my work schedule. Uh, I'm looking to see if anybody has commented now other than than uh, Robert here. Let me finish reading what he said. It seems in this movement of the KJV, they're worshiping the King James Version, not King Jesus. I feel like most of the guys in the KJV movement are more concerned about King James and not about the King of Kings. You know what, Robert? That's You're just judging people is what you're doing. Okay? What we're trying, what we're all about. Let me tell you what we're all about, the real ones. We're all about truth. We're all about absolute truth, not diluted truth, not, yes, the Bible contains the Word of God, or in the original manuscripts it was the Word of God. We're about present truth right now, and we're fighting a battle. We're fighting a battle in our churches. We're fighting a battle in denominations. We're fighting a battle everywhere because the Word of God, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, and I'm referring to the in errant, infallible, absolutely zero mistakes, translated word of God. That Bible is being thrown out everywhere. And God has raised us up in spite of the opposition, in spite of everything else that's against us. God has raised us up to stand and defend and to prove that this Bible's right. And we're not going away until the trumpet sounds. I love you. This is Pastor Mike. I have had a wonderful time today, and I want you to notice I've not had to get up and go to the bathroom one time. Okay? We'll see what Sunday brings. Tomorrow, I will be hopefully doing a pure Bible study. Uh, tomorrow, I have the script 99% done for Giants, Part 3, The Hybrids. I have appreciated all you guys and the comments you made and the and the things that you've said about the first two uh pray and you know what i you know what i really want to do wanted to do and i think i've done it what i wanted to do with those two was to show everybody that the king james bible can be trusted it can be counted on it can be depended on everything that it says it's right and if you're looking for truth you need search not you need not search anywhere else but right here I am on my way out. I love you. I will see you on Thursday live. See ya.